But while things seem to have quietened down on a headline basis in traditional media, you know, when it comes to piracy off the coast of Somalia, certainly not indicative of anything declining in terms of the threat being posed by this phenomenon. So at the top, take us through the status of things as they stand right now. The, straight, the, the, the uh, state of maritime uh, piracy is, is quite serious in Africa. And, and uh, both in East Africa and, and in West Africa. Mm -hmm. We do go through these uh, troughs where things seem to be improving, but it's not really improving because the conditions for piracy in the first place ha have not go go gone away. And it's having a huge impact on the capacity of uh, the ability of ships to dock mm -hmm. and, 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 and deliver goods, whether it's food or whatever. It's raising the costs of, of doing business because the cost of ensuring goods is going up and that is passed on to, uh, to the consumer. Mm -hmm. And ships have to dock in the Cape of Good Hope and other places to, to avoid the, the pro problem. Then goods have to be moved over land. All that is pushing up costs. But also it's affecting the fisheries industry. Uh, for especially for island states such as you know uh, uh, Seychelles or uh, Mauritius to an extent, mm -hmm. and 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 finally it's, it's affecting the ability of countries to exploit any oil and gas offshore because there are security concerns on that as well. Of course, uh, you know I picked up that figure on the Seychelles. It cost the Seychelles four percent of GDP in two thousand and nine, and as I mentioned earlier, just looking at the rerouting of tankers, uh, you know carrying oil from the Gulf of Aden to the Cape, for example, that's costing the industry uh, three and a half billion dollars in annual fuel costs. That's the cost of avoiding the problem. Why are we struggling to tackle this problem head on? The, the root cause is governance. Uh, uh, when the, 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 uh, uh, the problem started a, a couple of decades ago, I think, in Somalia, where government collapsed, there is no government to bring order and, and provide security. I, the problem started right there. Until you deal with the issue of governance, mm -hmm. uh, we we'll always have problems with Paris, at least in, in How do Africa. we deal with the issue of governance? Oh, it's not an easy thing, frankly. Uh, we know that it has been tried before. Uh, we've got the African uh, force in there trying to, you know, work with the rebels, uh, but also to fight back to make sure that there's more security. It's just not easy. I've no, I've no solution uh, for that. Mm -hmm. I think it would probably take a combination of the African Union working with the United Nations and other bodies and the East African community to, 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 to begin to work with all parties in that region to make sure that at some point there are free and fair elections, yeah. the government comes in place. It's just not easy. Uh, and in West Africa, the issue has been a, a sense of exclusion. Uh, let's say in Nigeria, for instance, in the Niger Delta, uh, people feel excluded from the resources that are uh, in their you know, uh, homeland and somehow they need to be included or at least in the solutions that are, are proposed, there should be some kind of, you know, a, a sense of compensation mm -hmm. or fair play uh, between uh, the local communities, the government, and the international companies. So, so all that, that, that is making things, you know, uh, not so easy. And going back to East Africa, there was the whole issue of, fi of, of, of foreign the ships coming in to, ship or to, to fish off the coast of Somalia. And then the Somalis feeling that their fish are being stolen. Mm -hmm. And the, the initial pirates were actually the fishermen who were responding and reacting to that. So all those things need, need to be dealt with. Of course, uh, you know, the first step one would assume would be to actually identify what makes uh, particular areas more vulnerable to piracy attacks than others. So what are some of those vulnerabilities as they stand? I would say is is poor gov governance or mm -hmm. absence of, of, of governance, is basically threat to resource endowment, whether it's fishing, uh, fisheries in the east coast mm -hmm. of Africa, or oil, uh, you know, in, the, in West Africa, for instance. So, so those are two critical pillars of piracy, and 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 and, and finally, there must be some kind of tourism activity, which, which, which is kind of bringing tourists by ship to the area, for instance. Mm. Uh, and that's, that's an easy one. So you, you attack uh, any of the ship, uh, shipping liners bringing in tourists. And, and that's what is happening in East Africa. In a bit of lessening that vulnerability, initiatives have been implemented by the UN and regional economies alike. You know, what role do you see the African Development Bank playing in trying to contain this problem? Well, well the, the, as a bank, we obviously have a role to play. Our, our job is to facilitate development. Uh, I would say that really is in, is in working with the governments mm -hmm. uh, uh, that are functioning, uh, in maybe uh, replenishing their funds for building up security 
to deal with the issue, to fight the, secu the, the, the piracy uh, issue off. Uh, but, but, the, but that's also scratching the surface, frankly, mm -hmm. uh, 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 because we're not capacitated enough to deal with the governance issues, for instance, to put a whole government in place or whatever, uh, but at least to work with governments to ameliorate the impact of, of piracy.